People ask me all the time what's been my biggest emotional challenge since getting divorced. And I have to say that it's come to the realization of how replaceable I was in my marriage. You know, a big part of why I left and became unhappy in my marriage was because I did not feel seen, heard, celebrated, and valued for who I was and what I brought to that relationship. Okay. Here we go with the narcissism. I did not be, I have not been, feel seen, heard, validated, appreciated, celebrated. Uh, were you doing that for him? I, I never hear these women talk about, well, yeah, I was doing that for my husband. Were you doing that for him? Okay. And a bigger question is, why did you marry this guy knowing that he was like that? No, he wasn't like that before. I, I don't like hearing that, right? I, I don't like hearing that excuse. No. This is why you get to know the person before you marry him. But uh, obviously, she married a dude who was probably a bad boy, right? She, this, this woman probably looked pretty good back in the day or probably looked decent, I want to say, when she was in her 20s. So uh, she had her pick of the litter and she just bypassed all the nice guys, all the beta brads to go for the alpha Chad, right? She went for the Chad. And Chad... He's, he's just not, not going to put in that much work. Why? Because Chad could get other hotties. He could get other ladies. Other women want him. So he's going to put in the bare minimum. If you want a guy who's going to make you feel appreciated, celebrated, and validated every single day and is going to do this stuff for you, uh, you need to marry the blue pill beta brat. But hey, these girls don't want that because that guy would really treat them well. Right? <laughs> I mean, these guys would really go the distance for these girls. I, I see these guys all the time. Right? They would go the distance for these chicks and do everything possible to make sure she's happy. Happy wife, happy life. You know, but um, as you guys know in the Red Pill community, the second you do that, you know, and you hand your balls over to her, your relationship's over, she will have no respect for you, right? She will, she will not respect you. And if a chick doesn't respect you, what if I told you? She can't love you. She can't, uh, she's not going to stay. And it became very apparent in my divorce that that was true. When mm. I left my ex-husband, he was apparently devastated. I ruined his life. But you did. But, oh my gosh. Look at her like pointing at us, guys. I mean, th this look right here. Dude, I, if her ex-husband happens to be watching this, I, you might have dodged a bullet. I mean, she's like, what is this, what is this like scolding look about her? I mean... I imagine her doing this to her husband, like constantly, like, you know what, you know what, mister, you know, talking down to him like he's a little boy. I don't like that. I don't like that disrespect. I, I would like literally, and that's, that's the thing too, is um, uh, he probably went from bad boy alpha Chad to uh, beta Brad, right, which she just did not respect. She respected him at first when he was all, you know, badass alpha male. Put in the bare minimum, but once he started like um, falling for her, and like, oh my gosh, I gotta make sure she's happy. That's when uh, all bets were off. And I've seen a lot of guys go from Alpha Chad to Beta Brad in their marriage just because after a while they're with the woman so long that they don't they want to keep her, right? They just want to keep her. But I mean, you know, you have to keep her in check. As we always teach you guys in the Red Pill community, um, you cannot stop gaming your wife. Right? That's actually a pickup lesson. That's not really a red pill lesson. That's a pickup artist lesson. You cannot stop gaming your wife. I always tell guys, especially students of mine, once they get like, you know, they go through my mastery program or they come on a boot camp with me and they meet their, you know, future LTR, their future girlfriend, which many of them do, and it's usually a really pretty hot chick, um, I tell them, okay, it doesn't mean you could suddenly just kick back on the couch and put your feet up. No you have to continue to game that chick, right? And obviously it should just be, become who you are, right? You become this guy who, you know, has boundaries and you don't reward her bad behavior. And when she crosses about those boundaries, you know, you have to bite back. You have to let her know, hey, don't talk to me like that. Or, hey, don't freaking point at me like that. I mean, I would literally tell this chick, if I was dating her, if I was married to her, like that dude is, I'd be like, hey, don't don't do that. Don't point at me like I'm some child, all right? Don't disrespect me like that, right? Put your finger down. I would literally talk to her like that. Put your finger down. Don't disrespect me like that, okay? If you do it again, you know, uh, I'm not putting up with it. I'm walking out the door, 
but he probably put up with this stuff. So look at her, like she's, you know, becoming a menace out there. But within two months, he was already in another long-term relationship that Good. lasted two years. Yeah, because he's a Chad, he could get another chick easily. Then overlapped with a second relationship, which has now lasted two years. And what I've seen and learned through watching this happen was that I wasn't special. That it didn't matter if it was me or just someone else who was filling the role that he needed to be filled in his life. As long as someone was going to come and slide right into my position and keep everything in his life exactly the same, it didn't matter who it was. It didn't matter if it was me or someone else. He needed that role to be filled and that's all that mattered. And so part of me... Okay, so what she just said right there, everything she just said is a complete self-projection. It's a complete self-projection. This is exactly what women do when it comes to guys. When it comes to guys, they're not valuing us. They're not seeing us as these unique individuals. No, we are just filling a role, okay? We're just filling a role, man. Um, and I, I've, I've joked about this in other coaching videos. Like, you guys remember this old TV show, The Brady Bunch back in the day. Remember Greg Brady, he was going to be Johnny Bravo. He's going to be this rock star, right? And then it turned out like he thought they liked him for his music and because he was special or, you know, whatever else. But it turned out the only reason this record company wanted him was because he fit this suit, right? He fit this ridiculous suit. That was it. <laughs> I didn't care what he sounded like. They were like, we could fix that in the recording studio. Doesn't matter. We just want the guy who fits the suit. So when it comes to these women like this, she herself was looking for the guy who fit the suit. And this is why I say I bet the guy she married was a Chad, right? Probably over six feet tall, making over six figures, probably like the college quarterback, that type of dude. She married that dude because he fit the role, right? That is what these chicks look for, right? We, they look for guys who fit the role, right? And it's just, it's very cold. Right? It's very cold, but she is self-projecting exactly what she is doing. And this is why I say most women are narcissists, like most modern women are narcissists. This is a very common trait that narcissists do. They self-project. They accuse you of doing what they themselves are doing. Right? I bet if we were to talk to our ex-husband, he would have a completely different story. I guarantee I, this is narcissistic language here, by the way. Okay, this is no, total narc language. I wasn't valued and celebrated for who I was. It's kind of like how a lot of people on the left or a lot of these wokies um, will complain that, like, if they watch a movie or something, oh, I can't relate to any of these '80s movies. I can't relate to like Pretty in Pink or Breakfast Club or anything because there's nobody there who looks like me. I'm a you know overweight, fat, half Asian, half black person. Half, half Asian, half black, 300 pound female. How come nobody in this movie looks like me? I can't watch this movie. No one looks like me. I can't relate to it. That's something that narcissists do, right? That's what narcissists do. I could watch Indiana Jones or Rock. I don't look like Indiana Jones, but I could watch Indiana Jones and imagine myself there like, ooh, I'm Indiana Jones. I don't, I don't need him to look like me, right? Because I'm not a narcissist. Right? But a narcissist would look and, you know, would say something like that. So what, the way she's talking right now, she's using, she doesn't even know she's doing it. She's doing, she's using very narcissistic language. You could even see by her body language and the expression on her face. Right? And I teach all this stuff. I teach self-development. I minored in psychology. <laughs> I mean, I've been teaching stuff for three decades. I've been in and out in venues for 30 years. I learned the most there about human behavior. And just by watching her body language, she is just completely oblivious to her own shortcomings. And she's just projecting it all onto her poor ex-husband. I feel sorry for that dude. This chick, is a, this chick is a nightmare. I can see that now because all of those years that I committed to the marriage were turned off in a dime because I didn't follow the role he wanted me to play. Turned off in a dime, you divorced him. You see, again, the narcissist playing victim. She was the one who divorced him and yet here she is saying, Oh, it was just turned off in a dime. She also, she just said a second ago that he was devastated. He was devastated. Why was he devastated? Because he couldn't believe he was losing you. But you, you cold ass bitch, you're like, well, 
weren't celebrating me, and you know, I, you just moved on to this next relationship. What do you want the guy to do? Sit there and cry over you for the next 30 years of his life? Unreal. This chick can't even see. I mean, yeah, her eyes speak volumes. I mean, these eyeballs speak volumes. And sadly, you know where she's getting uh, fed a lot of this horse manure that's in her brain now? I bet a million dollars she got all of this brainwashing from her therapist. Yep, all therapist. The therapist who said, girl, he's not valuing you. He's not seeing you for who you are. He's not celebrating you. You know, he fed her all of this jive and filled her, filled her head up with all this stuff. And now she's just going around like an NPC, just repeating the same thing. Right? I mean, the same thing like when you see these leftists, they're like NPC. They're just like repeating these slogans that just make no sense. So, yeah, it's very sad. She has like zero, that's another thing that narcissists have, zero self-awareness. She cannot even see her own hypocrisy. <laughs> Let's go on to the next clip. This is a message from my therapist. Oh, um, there you go. The magic T word. Getting stood up again by the same guy. This chick got stood up by the same guy. So don't worry, your therapist will tell you that, girl, you need to be celebrated, valued, seen, appreciated, honored. Whatever so, you say, your highness. We talked about in our last session. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, I hear those words. I'm like, who the F are you, man? Who are you? Are you some like freaking, are you, are you Princess Leia or something? Give me a break. Get off your high horse, lady. Unreal. Um, but I did decide to just come and get a drink by myself. And now I'm gonna go to Crumble Cookie and get myself a cookie. Cause I deserve it. Of course you do. Hey. So she got flaked on by, twice by the same dude common occurrence with these middle-aged women. Okay, one more clip. I'm not all dressed up for a date. And he stood me up for a second time. I mean, what is up with these chicks going out with the same dude who already stood them up? Stood them up? You know what this tells you? It tells you that these women are all chasing the top-tier guys, right? Just like on the dating apps. And that is factual, by the way. The data is out on these dating apps, guys. That's why I tell you, get off these dating apps. 80% of the women, maybe 90% of the women on those dating apps, according to the studies, are all trying to pursue the same top 10% of dudes on those apps. And this is why, like, you see it here playing out in real life. These chicks are getting flaked on by the same dude. When they can easily just reach into their friend zone like a little grab bag, let me reach in my friend zone and pull some simp out, pull out some blue pill sucker to go on a date with who will treat me well, who won't do this to me. He won't flake on me. None of these blue pill simps, they don't flake. They show up, right? They treat you right. These guys are indoctrinated to the core. These are exactly the type of guys that, you know, you list off like all, he just. <laughs> He just checks all the boxes that you complain about that Chad won't do for you. But do you want that blue pill simple? No. Why? It just boils down to respect. They cannot respect that guy. Even though they want Chad to become that guy, right? They want the alpha Chad to become this beta ties, beta Brad. Um, but the second that dude becomes that dude, uh, this beta dude, he's out. They will, they will get dry as a desert for that guy. And um, he will be out the door too. So. Another reason, I just don't feel bad for these chicks. I know exactly the game they're playing. This is why we call them the DG on my channel, right? And I've gotten, over the years, I've gotten a lot of hate from these blue pill simps, suckers, guys with bigger channels. I mean, I remember some big channel dude, some like, some complete tard did a, I think it was like five or six years ago, six years ago, maybe 2016, seven years ago now, uh, covered my video about nice guys and he, tried to troll me on that and I was like, I was, I'm completely right. And that guy's a complete sucker, simp ass. He's the type of dude to, you know, just white knight for these chicks. He's a com complete little bitch. So I put on my happy face. And this is very narcissistic behavior here too. It's like, she just got flaked on. Um, that's why I say it's, uh, these modern women overwhelmingly are all narcs. 
She just got flaked on. Here she's doing like a TikTok, like showing how great she looks. I mean, come on, man. There are other important things in life. And decided single life hurts less, so no more dates for me. Um, single life hurts. No, what do you mean no more dates for you? You're choosing the guys that are out of your league, lady. Uh, and that's a common occurrence, you know, for these middle-aged women. When you try to get guys out of your league, um, you're going to get flaked on. You're going to get cheated on. You're going to get lied to. You're going to get used for sex. Sorry, none of these guys are going to sit there and commit to you, right? And I'm glad they don't. I am so glad they don't commit to you. You know why? Because I know what you guys are up to. I know what you're going to do to these guys. All you're going to do is try to beta tie them, shame them into becoming the beta Brad. And once he becomes a beta Brad and he starts treating you well, guess what? That's when you knee him in the nuts and, you, you know, you, you just completely dismiss him and go out there and find yourself another alpha. That's what makes you damage goods. As always, gentlemen, drop your comments below. Let me know what you think of tonight's coaching video, anything you would like to add, anything you would like to share, anything I might have missed, drop them in the comments below. As always, this is Amp from The 33 Secrets signing out here. Don't forget to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and smash that notification bell for me as well. Helps me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. And for you guys who want to support my work and everything I'm teaching you here, just jump into seven months of mastery. Right now it's only a buck for the entire first month of coaching lessons from me. So take advantage of it. All you need to do is click the link below in my description box. It will take you over to my website where you can get signed up right now. Just takes two seconds, so do that now. And I'll see you in my next coaching video. I'm out.